sound at its most basic level is an object vibrating and making ripples or waves in the air around it. Our ears capture these waves and interpret them as the sounds we hear. Our brain interprets these waves based on their amplitude, how loud they are, and their frequency, their pitch. So to capture these waves, we need something that will vibrate with these waves and convert them into an electrical signal. And to recreate these waves, we need something that will vibrate when an electrical signal is applied. This process of converting acoustic or sound energy into electrical energy or vice versa is called transduction. And the devices that perform these functions are called transducers. More directly, devices that convert acoustic energy to electrical energy are called microphones. And devices that convert electrical energy to acoustic energy are called speakers. The simplest and most common way to do both of these tasks is with a magnet and a copper coil. When you run a current through a copper coil, it generates a magnetic field and becomes a magnet for as long as the current is applied. Similarly, a copper coil moved through a magnetic field will generate a small amount of electrical current. This is the principle around which electric motors and electric generators are based. To use this principle to make a transducer, you simply need to suspend a copper coil inside of a magnet. If the copper coil is moved by incoming sound waves, then the coil acts as a microphone and generates an electrical representation of the sound. If a current is applied to the copper coil, then it will move inside of the magnet and act as a speaker. So the answer to your question is yes, at this fundamental level, dynamic microphones and speakers are identical devices. The differences arise in how they are tailored to their tasks. In both directions, a transducer is horribly inefficient, so the devices need to be designed very differently. A microphone needs to be able to move in response to very slight air pressure changes, so the magnet and coil assembly, referred to as the microphone's capsule, needs to be as light as possible. So, they're made very small, and since the current generated by even the loudest sounds is relatively small, only very thin copper wire is necessary. For a speaker, high current is needed to move the coil, so heavier wire is used, and a large cone is attached to the end of the coil to function almost like a paddle to move more air with each stroke of the coil. This same inefficiency means that the output from a microphone is nowhere near enough to move a speaker coil. So between the microphone and the speaker, you need an amplifier to make up for the inefficiency in the system or to boost the signal so that the output of the speaker is louder than the original sound that was captured by the microphone. Because that is kind of the point of all of this. Oftentimes we want to manipulate the sound while it's in the electronic realm to change the tone or to mix multiple microphones together. Unfortunately, neither of our signals work well for this. The microphone signal is so low that it requires very sensitive components to manipulate without adding a lot of noise. The speaker signal is so high that it requires very large, beefy components to handle the current. In both cases, the signals can vary so much in level from one application to another that it's almost impossible to design gear that would work well in every case. To work around this, there is an intermediate signal level called line level. It is an industry standard level of plus 4 dBU that almost all pieces of audio equipment operate at, and does not need the high sensitivity or high current capacity required to process microphone and speaker level signals. This means that most sound systems have at least two amplifier stages, a high sensitivity, relatively low output amplifier called a preamp that takes the signal from mic level to line level and then a second high output amplifier to bring the signal up to speaker level. For more information on this process, check out my video on gain structure. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, it would be great if you could like and subscribe. And finally, please don't ever drop a microphone. Yes.